According to CNN, quote, true crime often veers into exploitation even as it maintains that it's serving up justice or education or explanation, end quote. Let's explore this accusation of the possibility of exploitation in true crime stories that actually can be a true statement for those who write about, make videos about, and or make films or documentaries about, and how artistic license can contribute to this as well. The Netflix film series Dahmer has almost everything a good or great movie should possess, which is great acting, great writing, directing, cinematography, and when the overall production value all comes together to tell one cohesive, entertaining, and impactful story. This 10-episode series showcased unbelievable negligence by police officials, the gruesome crimes of Jeffrey Dahmer, and how racism had an impact on this story and how underserved communities often suffer greatly because of this social ill. According to in-depth scene, quote, Most great films, therefore, have a story which is both engaging and which functions in presenting an insight or truth about the human experience. Great films are a product of their time. They often represent a moment or period in a particular place in history and have a definite cultural impact, end quote. Having said that, what I have always had a problem with when it comes to autobiographical books and movies is authenticity. For example, I typically don't buy an autobiography on anyone's life if the central character is not either writing the book or is not involved in some kind of way. So, as good as the book may be, for me, I don't have an interest in reading autobiographical books like that, especially if the person is still living, because I need the connection with the central character to be authentic. Otherwise, it's just speculation rather than retelling of a story with some first-hand knowledge of who this person is and what really happened in their life. And I feel the same way about movies. If I'm going to watch a movie about Dahmer, who, although he is dead, has many interviews on file and all the other people that are intricate parts of his story, which includes his family, victims, survivors, police, lawyers, etc., then I need authenticity as well. According to CNN, quote, Ryan Murphy's cumbersomely titled series, which stars Evan Peters as Dahmer, was the streaming platform's most watched news show ever in its first week. But a loud backlash has cropped up around the series' failure to consult victims' families, even as the show touts a mission to put their stories at the center of the drama, end quote. Jeffrey Dahmer, who was born on May 21, 1960, and was killed in prison on November 28, 1994, is also known as the Milwaukee Cannibal and the Milwaukee Monster. Dahmer was an American serial killer and sex offender who committed the murder and dismemberment of 17 men and boys between the years of 1978 through 1991. Many of his murders also included necrophilia, cannibalism, and the permanent preservation of body parts, typically all are part of the skeleton as well. He was sentenced to 15 consecutive life sentences. Much of the controversy surrounding this film is a disappointment with artistic license that the makers of this series implemented while making this movie. I'm sure there are many people who don't necessarily care whether artistic license is used in movies or not, and that's their preference to not allow artistic license to interfere with their enjoyment of a good movie. But on the other hand, oftentimes the characters portrayed in these movies feel very differently, and so do I. Whenever I read or hear about people who are upset with a book or a movie that has been made about them or a family member without their permission or even their blessing, I think about how I would feel if that were me. And I say this without a doubt that no one could tell my story with complete accuracy and in full context except me. My private thoughts, desires, wishes, dislikes, character flaws, and strengths could not be told accurately unless I told them. Even different events in my life that happened and can be verified still will not tell the whole story regarding that event unless I told it. This is what I think about when I read or hear about a book or a movie that was written or created without the actual players involved. It's being reported that the dramatization of what happened to the victims and Jeffrey Dahmer is fairly accurate, but many facts of the case are not accurate. According to Pop Buzz, quote, 
Anne E. Schwartz, author and former reporter, told The Independent that the Netflix series took artistic license with a lot of key details, adding that it actually does not bear a great deal of resemblance to the facts of the case, end quote. In the Netflix movie Dahmer, there were many big details left out and small details as well. For example, I found it interesting that the courtroom scenes show Dahmer with his glasses on, whereas in real life, he did not wear his glasses in the courtroom deliberately because he said he didn't want to see the families in the courtroom. He said something to the effect that it helped him to remain detached. A bigger discrepancy with the movie and what happened in real life was the depiction of Glenda Cleveland, who was said to be a neighbor of Jeffrey Dahmer's, but actually lived in a building next to the Oxford apartments where Jeffrey lived, and her storyline was actually a compilation of many people's encounters with Jeffrey Dahmer. Although she was a definite advocate for reporting Jeffrey Dahmer to the police and trying to get them to investigate him. However, she never actually met him. But Glenda Cleveland's persistence and efforts were highly praised throughout the film. Pamela Bass was actually Dahmer's neighbor, and she was actually quite fond of him and not suspicious of him. Pamela was the one who actually did eat a sandwich prepared by Jeffrey for her, and now fears it may have been made with human flesh. Emmy-winning producer Nancy Glass also interviewed the Milwaukee Monster in 1993 for CNN's Inside Edition, and she spoke about some inaccuracies recently. She talked about the story that Lionel Dahmer, Jeffrey's father, would catch roadkill with Jeffrey and dissect the animals at home. Glass says she had a close relationship with Dahmer's parents and doesn't believe that story to be true. And the smell in Jeffrey's apartment that was consistently referenced throughout the movie was actually more of a chemical smell rather than a smell of decomposing bodies, and it was reported that his apartment was fairly neat and clean. There was also controversy around the two police officers, John Balserzak and Joseph Gabrish, who failed to protect the 14-year-old boy, Connor X. Synthasenfen, who had escaped from Dahmer only to be led back to his apartment, escorted by the police, as to whether they were racist or not. They were initially suspended, but eventually got both their jobs back in spite of their gross negligence. Connor X. was killed not long after they escorted him back to Dahmer's apartment. There are other discrepancies in the series that are problematic as well, and unfortunately, with true crime stories, some people do view it as entertaining, and some sickos become infatuated with the actor and also the original character. I can imagine every serial killer has a fan club, and how sad that is, especially when we live in a world where there are many people to acknowledge for their accomplishments and humanitarian work other than murderers. My heartfelt desire when I upload a true crime video here on YouTube is to inform, educate, and learn tips on how to maybe, just maybe, avoid a possible situation that someone else encountered and lost their life because of it. This will not always be possible, of course, but it's worth the effort. There are a lot of evil things that go on in this world, and we have to talk about them. Not to entertain ourselves with the heinous acts that are committed, no but to extend empathy and sympathy to the victims and the families while also keeping the victims' stories alive. There is a place for artistic license. I just don't agree that artistic license should actually end up changing the story. There has never been a time when I upload a video to Charlie Reed Crime Stories where I don't experience a flood of emotions about the victims and the family and friends that I cover, and it will never get easier. And I have started stories that I could not finish because they were just too much for me to handle. Telling true crime stories can accomplish the original goal of educating and informing, but when your storytelling ignores the sensitive nature of your subject matter, in addition to significant parts of the story being altered or totally misrepresented, then to me the goal can become lost in artistic translation, and when the villains become the heroes, the whole genre is lost. bloopers, which includes his family, victims, survivors, police, lawyers, etc. The knighted authenticity, oh my god.
Whenever I read or hear about people who are upset with a book or a movie that has been made about them or a family member without their permission or even their blessing, I think about how I would feel if that were me. And I say this without a doubt, that no one could tell my story with complete axery, axery? But Clenda, Clenda, who's Clenda? Clenda.